Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today. We are back in Mayberry Park Zoo, finally, with another speed build video for you guys. And this time, we are adding the black-tailed prairie dogs. Now, I know it's taken me quite a while. I do apologize. Um, I have had a bit of bad luck with content recently, and I'm just on the edge, just on the edge of breaking down and taking a really long break um, because I've had issues with the past three videos that I have tried to record, uh, this one being one of them. So if you missed it, a couple days ago, we did stream the second half of this video and I was recording it, all was fine and dandy. And then when I went to go look back at the recording, for whatever reason, my my NVIDIA uh, graphics, the um, the GeForce recording, whatever it is that it's called, recorded just a black screen. It recorded all my audio, but I don't need the audio for speed builds. I need the screen. So unfortunately, I lost all of that footage for whatever reason, and I had to go back and delete all of the interior of this habitat and build it again. I didn't go back and delete everything and rebuild it because I was really happy with how it turned out and I didn't want to make a mistake and build it a little differently the second time. So this video is going to be a very nice, quick, short video because there's not too much footage, but I guess that's fitting because it is a small habitat anyway, right? The prairie dogs do not take up a lot of space. They don't actually need a whole lot in their enclosure. For the most part, prairie dog and meerkat enclosures are relatively plain because they just kind of burrow around and, and dig in the dirt and stuff like that. So it is kind of fitting for them. It's a very quick habitat. It is the front habitat when you first walk into Mayberry Park, this is the habitat you're going to be greeted with. And I wanted to have it be something very small and very simple, um, you know, like a low ticket animal, uh, if we're going to talk about them in those terms, right? That's kind of what you start your zoo off with. And I really did not want to start this zoo off with the flamingos. I do plan on adding the flamingos because I think they are a very uh, typical and iconic zoo animal, but I didn't want them to be the main entrance animal. So after the prairie dogs, I'm actually thinking that meerkats might be another kind of entrance animal, but maybe not the next one we build for. I still really want to build for some of the North America animal pack animals, and I haven't built for the Arctic fox, um, and I haven't built for one of the other animals and now I'm drawing a blank because we did we did the moose in Pine Mountain, we did the cougar as a one-off, we did the beaver in Socorro, uh, we did the sea lions as a one-off. Why am I drawing a blank on what the other one is? And these are the, the prairie dogs. Anyway, so maybe it'll be the Arctic Fox because I can't remember what the other animal is off the top of my head. Um, but really taking inspiration from just kind of very plain, very simple, prairie dog slash meerkat habitats. Cause I will tell you when I went to Google prairie dog habitats and look and see, you know, real life prairie dog habitats, I didn't get too much, but prairie dog habitats and meerkat habitats are very similar to one another. Their care requirements, I believe, as far as I could tell, are fairly similar in what they need in an enclosure and how to keep them in an enclosure. Um, so I ended up using some references off some meerkat habitats. And I really wanted to do this very plain and simple glass viewing area. They have just a little bit of of a viewing area where you walk up and you can stand right next to the glass and look in, but of course still having a double fence to try to keep people directly off the glass. Uh, the meerkat habitat at the uh, San Diego Zoo Safari Park, actually their park out in um, San Pasqual Valley in Escondido, whatever you want to technically call it, um, they actually have their meerkat habitat. You can walk right up and you can put your hands right on the glass. There's really nothing keeping you back. Um, but I wanted to do this just because one, it, you know, in my mind keeps the guests back, keeps them behaving, hopefully, <laughs> but it also adds just a little bit more detail in the front with those logs. I was worried at first about this build looking a little bit too African with the color of the rocks and the um, the color of the, the poles, the sticks right there. So I end up changing the color of the rocks to more of like a gray tone and that really helped. It helped it make it feel more like a zoo that's in a city, more like those are 
false facade rocks or real rocks that have been man, you know, hand placed there. I was going to say man made, but real rocks that have been uh, placed there by the zoo builders. Um, and then just a very simple, simple backstage, implied simple backstage area uh, with this little building. This would be where the keepers would have all their food and, and all the care requirements and stuff like that. Thinking that possibly we can put another habitat on the backside of it. Maybe that will be the meerkats and this will be the one building that houses them both. Um, I'm not quite sure yet because I haven't thought about my plans going forward. Despite this being a really short video, I still do want to talk about our little prairie dogs for just a minute here. So I have some information pulled up from the Smithsonian, the National Zoo. So let's go ahead and talk about them, starting with their physical description. As you can probably tell from watching them in game, black tailed prairie dogs are tan with whitish or buff white bellies. The tips of their tails are sparsely covered by black hair, and they have short ears and compared to their body size, relatively large black eyes. I think they're absolutely adorable, but everybody could have guessed that. I think all of the animals are adorable, right? <laughs> Moving on to talk about their communication, prairie dogs exhibit a broad range of vocalizations and there is some evidence of variation in the basic sound used to identify different types of predators. Uh, chirps are alarm calls, which usually sound like a chirk, chirk, chirk. Hopefully I did that right. <laughs> and a jump yip is a strong arc of the back followed by a shrill yip. The occurrence when a predator leaves the area or can be used for territorial displays. So it just sounds like they have lots of different noises that mean lots of different things. So communicating with one another to make sure that they all stay safe. They are going to be kind of a lookout animal, right? The, their main predators are going to be birds of prey and things like that. So looking up in the sky and alerting, uh, alerting others when when their predators are near. Talking about their food and eating habits, grasses and leafy vegetation make up 98% of the diet for the black-tailed prairie dogs. They occasionally eat grasshoppers, cutworms, bugs, and beetles. Their primary herbivorous diet provides all the moisture content that they need. These prairie dogs do not need to drink water. Oh, that's actually really interesting. I know there's a lot of desert animals that are like that. Um, not that these are desert animals, but that's one thing that's common in desert animals is that they get all the moisture from the food that they eat because water is really scarce. Um, but I didn't actually know that about prairie dogs. Very cool. Talking a little bit about their social structure, black-tailed prairie dogs are social animals that live in towns or colonies, which are further divided into familiar neighborhoods. Cool. The number of prairie dogs in each town can fluctuate, but will normally amount to 12 individuals per 2.5 acres. Wow, that's a lot of prairie dogs. These family groupings are made up of one male and one to four females, and they're young of up to two years of age. Young male prairie dogs will usually migrate to another colony when they mature and will seldom start up their own colony. Very cool. Let's just do a couple fun facts before we go back to the build again. This being such a short video, I want to squeeze everything in. Uh, so a couple fun facts for you. Black-tailed prairie dogs are actually a species of ground squirrel, only named dog because of their alarm bark. The largest prairie dog colony ever recorded spanned over 25,000 square miles and was home to an estimated 400. 400 million prairie dogs. My goodness, that is a lot of prairie dogs. And they are listed as least concern on the IUCN red list, so that is good. That means they are stable in the wild. So that's a little bit about our prairie dog friends. Let's hop over back and see what we're doing in the build. We are putting lots and lots of clutter, for lack of a better word. We're putting down lots of grass and branches and rocks, again, with prairie dog habitats being relatively plain. I wanted to figure out some way where we could kind of add some decoration and some interest to the habitat. You can see I did put one tree there and then we end up putting a tree on the outside, the common ash tree on the outside of the right hand side. The idea being that it would provide them with some sort of cover, some sort of shelter from, you know, birds of prey and their predators and things like that. Make them feel a little bit more comfortable. Somebody asked me on stream, you know, if they would be open to predation in this 
this type of habitat in a zoo? And I didn't actually have a good answer because the, the prairie dog or meerkat habitats that I've seen in real life have all been open like this. Um, and I don't actually know how zoos combat uh, predation like that. So if you guys do know if the zoos are doing something that I just haven't noticed or um, can't see, let me know because I would be curious to see how um, how they, they deal with that. Or if the prairie dogs are just capable of escaping into their burrows and can keep themselves safe on their own, I'd be really interested to hear. Anyway, with that being said, we are just now going to hop into some end cinematics. I really do hope you guys enjoyed. Again, leaving a like down below really does help out the channel and help out the video so i greatly appreciate it subscribe if you're interested in seeing more planet zoo content and until next time i will talk at you guys in the next video bye